IT'S THE EASTER SEASON, MAUNDAY THURSDAY, THE NIGHT JESUS WAS BETRAYED. HE AND HIS DISCIPLES GATHERED IN AN UPPER ROOM TO CELEBRATE THE JEWISH PASSOVER. IN A FEW MINUTES, WE'LL COMMEMORATE THE LAST SUPPER BY SHARING COMMUNION TOGETHER. BUT FIRST, WE'RE GOING TO WATCH A DRAMATIC PORTRAYAL OF THE SACRIFICE OF CHRIST'S BODY AND BLOOD. IT'S TOLD BY THE LATE SCULPTOR GIL Emilio THROUGH HIS USE OF A PLAY THAT HE CALLS THE FACE OF CHRIST. IN THE BEGINNING WAS THE WORD, AND THE WORD WAS WITH GOD, AND THE WORD WAS GOD. AND THE WORD BECAME FLESH AND DWELLED AMONG US, AND WE BEHELD HIS GLORY, THAT GLORY AS OF THE ONLY BEGOTTEN OF THE FATHER, FULL OF GRACE AND TRUTH. WORDS LIKE THESE HAVE BEEN THE WORDS THAT HAVE INSPIRED THE ARTIST UP THROUGH THE CENTURIES TO PORTRAY THE FACE OF CHRIST. LET'S GO BACK INTO SOME OF THAT HISTORY AND SCRIPTURE AS THE ARTIST SPEAKS ABOUT OUR LORD AND SAVIOR, JESUS CHRIST. was long and rather ugly, and yet the early artist was inspired by the words of Isaiah, where Isaiah spoke about the suffering servant to come. In his 52nd chapter, Isaiah said that this suffering servant, this Messiah, would suffer a beating so that his form would be marred more than all the sons of men. And then in his 53rd chapter, and even now, in the first and early centuries, we see the split Nazarene beard. The 53rd chapter spoke about the despised man, abject among men, a man of sorrow as he would be, as if it were a root that would not bear fruit through the seed that was planted upon it or dropped upon a dry ground. There would be nothing about his appearance that would make us desirous of him. If you can imagine the words prophesied by Isaiah, this Jesus would eventually would be beaten and battered so that we couldn't recognize him any longer. And these are the very basic scriptural pieces that inspired the early Byzantine artist. Let's now move further to capture the Eastern appearance where it really began. see these long features. Holding that for a minute, let's jump the gap in centuries and move from the first through the 11th century to the Renaissance and see the appearance that we generally accept as the face of Christ. <laughs>
you see the warmer appearance of the face of Christ, the beard remaining the same from the very first century, what were the words that now move this artist? We can explain that through three paintings, the agony of the garden, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and the confrontation before the Roman soldiers. Remember when the soldiers took his clothing off and placed about him the gorgeous robes of a king. They would make sport of him. And they would place this purple robe about Jesus, who claimed to be the king of the Jews. And they would make fun of him. And then they gave him a scepter. But before going into that painting, let's look at the other two. Recently, most of the Christian world celebrated Palm Sunday, where Jesus rode into town on a donkey that hadn't been ridden before, according to prophecy. Jesus, as he would ride into those narrow streets of Jerusalem, a place that any tactician would advise he shouldn't have been at that time, people would throw palm leaves at his feet. And as he made his way through the narrow crowds, he would not only hear hosannas, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and the higher acclamation, hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, but those others who did not believe in this Jesus, he would see the Roman soldiers who would give him mock salutes. And Jesus would answer that from the tree. And as he made his way through, he would hear that beautiful prayer in his own language and in Hebrew as we understand it, the Shema. And those people would shout to him, Rabboni, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Lehenu, Adonai, Ekod. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And Jesus would ride into and through that crowd and then cleanse the temple. In the other painting, Jesus in the agony in the garden, we read it about it in Luke 22:44. As Jesus was in that garden, he knew what was about to happen within a matter of hours. This Jesus, born of a woman, as any man or woman is, eight days after his birth, he would shed blood according to the custom of his parents. But Jesus was born to die. And in that scene, we see Jesus lying there and then praying on a rock. Some of the apostles were not awake at that time. And as he sweat, Luke, the physician, tells us, after the fact, after he had gathered the evidence, Luke wasn't there at that time, that his sweat turned into giant droplets of blood. And that's when he began to die medically. Jesus would then look up into a beam of light and the artist Huffman portrays the scene. And Jesus would say to the Father, let this cup pass. Let me out of this moment, but let not my will be done but thine. And the artist can relate to him because Jesus prayed that prayer. And even after that prayer, he could hear the tinker of armor as one of his own would bring the soldiers to arrest him and give him the kiss of death. And then in that giant painting, the confrontation seen before the Roman soldiers. We can see the centurion, the commander of the guard. We're told about it in scripture that it was known as a cohort. Jesus at the cohort, a battalion of men, 900, 1,000, 1,200 men. And coming off his horse, the commander would make sport of him. And he would place a blindfold around the eyes of Jesus. After all, he heard about these great tricks and miracles he had performed. And all he had to do at that time was to prove and convince the cohort, the Roman soldiers. And so in front of his own men, he would ask Jesus to play a trick. Come on, Christ, you know, you've been around Judea. You've heard about all these prophets who heal people of leprosy and then a month later or something. The leprosy comes back. Are you one of those prophets, Christ? Tell my men because we haven't seen these great tricks. How many of you men have seen one of these tricks that Jesus has played? Just say, Christ, none of them, nor I. Come on, Christ, how was it? Well, you're a young man. You know, like the rest of us, you know, Christ, you don't have to go to Herod and be a politician. Tell us about that blind man along the road. They tell us that when he, he was there, you actually healed him. How did that go, Christ? Hey, Christ, can you see through that blindfold? Come on, Christ, if you're the king, you can see through a mere blindfold. On this side, Christ, who was it that spit on thee? Was it me, one of my men, six of them? How many of them are here, Christ? I read, O king. Can you see that I read? Which way do I hold it, O Christ? Straight up and down? Crossway? Come on, Christ. Speak to us. Play some kind of a trick. Look through the blindfold. On this side, Christ. Who smote thee here? And on that side. And on that side. Can't you see? 
through a mere piece of cloth, and this foolishness would go on. But Jesus didn't say one word, and they would remove the blindfold and let him go. We'll see what your own will do. And they would release him to the mob at the praetorium. At that time, they would fashion a crown of thorns. And then according to law and custom, Jesus would be scourged. Paul spoke about the stripes, 40 stripes minus one, according to the law. In this setting, would the soldiers actually count the 39? Jesus then would be delivered up. He would carry that cross some eight, nine hundred yards to Golgotha, the hill of skull, Calvary. And when they got him there, they would crown him with a crown of thorns, and they would crucify him. Oh, the Persians invented it, but the Roman soldiers were quite expert at this. And so then we see these scenes through paintings. We referred back to it in Scripture, Jesus fulfilling every iota of prophecy. In this condition, they would place him on a cross. They would fix him with nails in a special area in the wrist. They would drive these nails in his wrist, one down below on a foot overlapping the other. And Jesus didn't stand on the cross as some art would have. It's like some kind of a king. Jesus the man, total man, minus one thing that we are all heir to. He didn't sin. And on that cross, they wondered about this one. He couldn't exhale his air. And at that particular moment, Jesus would look up into the heavens and they became dark. He couldn't see the Father anymore. And he would rise, trying to exhale his air in this condition. And they could hear him. Jesus would rise on that fulcrum down below. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And in the ninth hour, even then he could have been tempted. Come down, Christ. You don't have to go through with this. He would hear the adversary, Satan, spoken about in Isaiah 14, 14. Jesus would rise again, and then he knew the Father wasn't there. And in his humanity, he didn't turn divinity on and off. Jesus would look up and shout something that they didn't quite understand. Eli, Eli. Lama Sabakhtani. My God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? And at the very end, Jesus would say, But into thy hands I commend my spirit, and he would die. But Jesus, as he promised, came back on the third day. Not to be Jesus the crucified, but Jesus Christ the King, as he said he would raising Lazarus from the dead, healing a woman, healing a blind man, nothing. Jesus came back, and he said he would come back again the second time. Are we living as if we who call ourselves Christians, as if we believe this, that Jesus had to die this death and the Father would let him go, as he did Ephraim? You're so bent on leaving me, he said in Hosea 10. And I must let you go. And Jesus, the Lamb, took upon himself all the sins of men so that we would be free under grace. If the world of art gives us nothing more than to think about these matters, it will have achieved its grandest goal.
AS I SEE THAT, MY HEART IS STIRRED WHEN I THINK THAT JESUS, THE ONE THAT WE WORSHIP, IS THE AUTHOR OF ALL LIFE IN THE UNIVERSE. HE IS THE AGENT OF CREATION. HE BROUGHT ALL THE WORLDS INTO BEING. HE BROUGHT THIS EARTH INTO BEING AND EVERYBODY THAT WAS ON IT. AND IT WAS NECESSARY FOR HIM TO COME INTO THIS EARTH TO LIVE OUT A DRAMA THAT ENCOMPASSED ALL OF HISTORY BECAUSE A REBELLION HAD TAKEN PLACE IN GOD'S UNIVERSE AND SATAN HAD TO BE DEFEATED. AND THE WAY TO BE DEFEATED WAS FOR GOD HIMSELF TO BEAR THE SIN AND THE SHAME AND THE PAIN AND TO LIVE A PERFECT LIFE AS A HUMAN BEING AND TO ALLOW SATAN TO KILL HIM BUT TO RISE AGAIN FROM THE GRAVE. NOW THE EASTER STORY IS ABOUT RESURRECTION AND JOY. IT'S NOT ABOUT SORROW, IT'S ABOUT RESURRECTION. BUT RIGHT NOW IT'S A STORY OF SORROW. IT'S A STORY OF SUFFERING. AND IT'S THE SUFFERING THAT JESUS CHRIST DID FOR YOU. HE DIDN'T HAVE TO DIE. HE VOLUNTARILY DIED. HE COULD HAVE SAID, I CAN CALL 10,000 ANGELS. BUT HE DIDN'T DO IT. HE SURRENDERED TO THE WILL OF THE FATHER BECAUSE THE FATHER HAD DETERMINED THAT YOU AND I SHOULD LIVE FOREVER IN HEAVEN WITH HIM. AND IN ORDER FOR THAT TO HAPPEN, HE HAD TO DEFEAT SATAN AND PAY THE PRICE FOR YOUR SIN. JESUS DIED FOR YOU. HE DIED FOR ME. AND HE SAYS TO YOU RIGHT NOW, IF YOU WILL OPEN THE DOOR OF YOUR HEART TO ME, I WILL COME IN. I WILL SUP WITH YOU AND YOU WITH ME. AND YOU WILL BE FOREVER WITH ME IN GLORY. DON'T SAY NO, BUT SAY YES. YES, JESUS. YES, I RECEIVE YOU. I'M GOING TO LEAD YOU IN A VERY SIMPLE PRAYER. AND IF YOU WANT THE LORD RIGHT NOW, I ASK YOU TO PRAY WITH ME. BOW YOUR HEAD AND PRAY THESE WORDS, LORD JESUS CHRIST. I'M A SINNER, LORD, BUT I KNOW THAT YOU, THE CREATOR OF LIFE, GAVE YOUR LIFE THAT I MIGHT LIVE FOREVER AND BE PART OF YOUR HEAVENLY KINGDOM. LORD, I SAY YES TO YOU. I SAY YES, LORD. COME INTO MY HEART. LIVE YOUR LIFE IN ME, AND I WILL LIVE FOR YOU, AND I WILL SERVE YOU ALL THE DAYS OF MY LIFE. THANK YOU, JESUS, THAT YOU'VE HEARD MY PRAYER, AND THANK YOU THAT YOU'VE COME INTO MY HEART. NOW, FOR THOSE WHO PRAYED WITH ME ON THIS SPECIAL MONDAY, THURSDAY BROADCAST, I'M GOING TO OFFER TO YOU SOMETHING FREE. IT'S CALLED A NEW DAY. I WENT SOME, ACTUALLY SEVERAL YEARS AGO NOW, INTO OUR AUDIO ROOM, AND I DID A 73-MINUTE COMPACT DISC THAT EXPLAINS WHAT IT MEANS TO HAVE AN EXCHANGED LIFE, THAT EXPLAINS WHAT IT MEANS TO HAVE YOUR SINS FORGIVEN, EXPLAINS WHAT IT MEANS TO BE FILLED WITH THE HOLY SPIRIT, EXPLAINS ABOUT WHAT HAPPENS IF YOU SIN AND HOW YOU GET BACK WITH THE LORD. I'LL GIVE ALL THAT TO YOU, BUT I'LL ASK YOU TO CALL NOW, AND WE'LL GIVE IT TO YOU FREE. BUT JUST CALL AND SAY, LOOK, I PRAYED WITH PAT. MY SINS ARE FORGIVEN, AND I'M, I'm ONE WITH JESUS. THE TELEPHONE NUMBER IS ON YOUR SCREEN. IT'S 1-800-759-0700. SO I ASK YOU NOW TO GO TO YOUR PHONES AND CALL IN. 1-800-759-0700. IF THE LINES FOR ANY REASON ARE BUSY, PLEASE CALL BACK. WELL, NOW, AS I PROMISED YOU, WE WERE GOING TO DO WHAT JESUS DID ON THE DAY BEFORE HE WAS CRUCIFIED. HE MET WITH HIS DISCIPLES IN AN UPPER ROOM, AND HE ATE THE SATYR MEAL WITH THEM. AND THEN WHEN THEY HAD SUPPED, HE TOOK BREAD AND HE BROKE IT, AND HE SAYS, THIS BREAD IS MY BODY WHICH IS BROKEN FOR YOU. AND THEN IN LIKE MANNER, HE TOOK THE CUP, AND HE SAYS, THIS CUP 
is the new covenant in my blood, a new testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it. So right now, Lord, we bless the bread. We thank you for the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless it now. home, you take the bread, if you have it, matzo, whatever you have. This is my body broken for you. And the Bible says in life matter, he took a cup and he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Not like the old covenant that had to be sealed over and over again with the blood of bulls and goats, but one time by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it. Well, the Bible says that when they had supped, they sang a hymn and they went out. Well, we leave you today on this special Easter celebration this Monday, Thursday, with a music from a DVD called The Story. Here is Natalie Grant singing Alive.
Terry Newsom. Did you know?